friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. Got us good all the time. And this video, which is part two in our series of kitchen tips and tricks, is going to be about using kitchen scraps to make the most of what you've got. This isn't about leftovers. That's I have a whole playlist on that with more coming in that one as well. But this is specifically about scraps that we normally just toss. This series is going to have everything on how to use measurements such as using your hands and stuff, which is part one, to also things like taking a specific product, something that you may make, and all the many uses you can have for that. And so again, today is about using up your different scraps from your kitchen to make the most of them. So let's start first by talking about coffee grounds, using your spent coffee grounds. Now, mostly what I like to do with mine is to all through the year, you know, winter, whenever, I toss them into my blueberry pots on my on the plants that I have because berries of all kinds especially blueberries, love coffee grounds. Any plant that likes a more acidic soil is really gonna like the coffee grounds. And here's the other benefits. By making sure they're put on top of your plants, this will also be helpful in deterring slugs, rats, cats, and other certain garden pests. I thought it was, it's kind of funny thinking of a cat as a garden pest, but you know, they do make messes sometimes in our gardens and tear up our catnip and our valerian if we don't <laughs> watch out. So putting this stuff around places that you want to keep the cats out of is a good option because they don't like the smell of the coffee grounds as, as well as certain other animals, but it also will help deter slugs. Now for us, there's very little natural things that work on slugs because we have we have terminator slugs. They can pretty much survive anything. So uh, they, they will crawl over eggshells to get to something here. So uh, all the natural methods, I know a lot of you are going to want to throw them at me, but believe me, we've tried them. So you say it, I'll probably say yes, done that. And no, it doesn't work in rain country. Anyway... <laughs> The only thing we found that is uh, is helpful, the two things, is sluggle, which is all natural and approved for organic gardening, and uh, chickens. Those work. And yes, I know ducks work, but we don't want ducks. So anyway, uh, coffee grounds for compost is especially good. Again, anything that's going to like acid acidic soil. So this also applies to even if you just grow rhododendrons, because that's the most you have for gardening because you grow them for their beauty. Rhododendrons love coffee grounds. So make sure you're not just tossing your coffee grounds, but put them on the specific plants that are really going to like these things. Again, berries, rhododendrons, and anything else you have that prefers acidic soil or simply just sprinkling around areas that you want to keep the pests out of. So the second one I've, I'm going to go over are eggshells. So as you can see, I have a basket full of eggshells and eventually I'll get to processing all of these up. But I use eggshells in various different ways. Eggshells are also a good thing to sprinkle in your garden for the sake of getting the minerals into the soil and putting them on top of the soil in some areas, not here, will help deter slugs as well because slugs don't usually like to climb over the, the, uh, the sharp edges of the eggshells. So breaking that up and using them in that way is is one very beneficial way you can use your eggshells. You can also put them in your chicken's food. I actually find if I just crush them up, I actually like to use this mortar, mortar and pestle here, put a few eggshells in there and just kind of grind them up like that and then toss them. I just toss them out in the yard for the chickens and they'll eat them. And that's very good for the chickens. They're getting those minerals and it will help also. They're getting their calcium and magnesium and give them stronger eggshells and that you can just turn around and give back to them again. I also will sprinkle this into the dog's food and I even make, here's some powdered up stuff. I even make capsules out of them. And you can see those right here and I have videos on making your own uh, multi-mineral and other types of capsules for all natural you know because I prefer doing it that way than buying things buying pre-made capsules because you never know what they put in them except for vitamin D it's the one I do still buy then the other thing is a lot of people would ask me why I don't use the eggshell powder in my tooth powder instead of using um, the calcium and magnesium powder well the main reason why is I stocked up years ago on lots of calcium and magnesium powder so I will it's they're the citrates and I will continue to use those in my tooth powder but 
if you don't already have those on hand, yes, powder up the eggshells, get them as powdery as you can, and then go ahead and put that into your tooth powder. And it's another way you can get that uh, those minerals on your teeth as you're brushing. And I have tried it and it I, I actually like it. I just recommend powdering it up real well so you don't have big chunks in there. But then I also have a video just on, on that goes more in depth on the eggshells, the eggshell powder in particular and how it's helped me. And I will go ahead and link to that video in the description box down below along with some other videos and other links. So make sure you click on show more so you can see the whole drop down of everything that's in the description box. Remember the comment section and the description box are two different things. Description boxes first, then the comment section. I know some people get those mixed up. But anyway, yeah, you can look that video up and find even more information on the uh, on this and what other health things using these eggshells is good for. So the eggshells have good many uses. Don't toss those eggshells. Okay, now let's move on to the next one. Uh, here I have the remains of a pot of tea that I made last night. This is my mint blend plus my marshmallow root, which has been my current favorite during the winter. Loving this. I just feel like I never can get enough of it. Now, one thing you can do with your spent tea uh, anymore, even though I made my homemade tea bags, I got to wear, I just don't even like to fuss with those. I just put all my tea stuff directly in the pot. So yes, sometimes I get little bits of leaves and stuff in my tea and I don't care. If that bothers you, then I recommend going and checking out my video on how to make your own homemade cotton tea bags. So they're reusable, you just wash them and reuse them. I always wash them by hand and then hang them up to dry. And uh, that's one way to do it. Uh, but if you don't mind a few pieces, this does have, like a lot of your teapots are gonna have a, a kind of a grating between the, uh, a sort of a filter between the pot and the spout anyway like this one does this old this old one which I have a, a video on this is a this is was a pretty cool find I'll link to that video down below as well but anyway that that uh, that sieve or that grate or whatever you want to call it, it does filter out quite a bit of the bigger pieces just not the small pieces so this is why I don't mind just throwing everything into my pot and brewing my tea. So what do I do with the leftover tea that's in there? Well, a lot of times what I'll do is I will take spices like, let's say for a tea like this, is I will go ahead and leave the herbs in there for another run and then add to it like some cinnamon sticks. As you can see, I have in a jar back there that I need to refill it, green jar right there. Uh, some whole cloves and even some organic orange peel that is also in a jar right down right down there and then I will I just add those in to get a little more flavor and then oh and also some either red pepper flakes or these uh, Japano or maybe it's Hapano uh, peppers they're supposed to be a Japanese hot pepper and uh, throw in one of those a lot sometimes i'll even break it in half to and that will make a, a very spicy tea and i love that also throw in a little bit of ginger and things like that and then i brew another pot based on that obviously the mint and the uh marshmallow are going to be a lot more watered down but then you've just added more flavor and benefits by doing that so that way i can get a little bit more out of my mint leaves and then after that second run i will then take everything out of the pot and then throw it out in the garden as compost. Typically they go on anything that's in pots. So anything on my deck, that's for two reasons. One, the things on the deck are the easiest to get to. They're right there. I don't have to go out into the main garden. I just walk out on the deck and dump them in any of the pots, any of the things I think need it the most. Uh, usually with the, uh, the mints, I'll put them in the blueberry pots, but often I try to focus on the pots that I don't always think to put stuff in. But I still want to build that soil back up because you'll notice the soil in your pots keeps getting less and less because that's going into making new plants. Where do those new plants come from? They have to be made out of some other substance and they're being made from the soils. That's why you'll see your soils begin to deplete and get smaller. So you need to add to them. So I'll just keep putting the the things like this, whatever kind of herbs and stuff I have in here, I'll just pour that to just dump it into those pots. And here's the other benefit is if you've got the cloves and the cinnamon in there, that will also help deter certain pests, even slugs from what I understand. Though again, that doesn't work very good here, but I know it's worked for other people. So back here, what you can see is I have two jars of citrus vinegar going. Now this is mostly 
orange peels because you know it's that time of the year you get the little the yummy tasty satsumas and other types of smaller oranges that uh, come in at the stores and we love those things and it's really not very often that we are able to get organic oranges and if they're non-organic i don't worry about the fruit inside it's the peels on the outside i'm not going to use the peels of a non-organic orange to do anything food related with however i will use them to make a cleaning vinegar so that's what i do with those particular peels is they go into getting some more of the vinegar that i like to use to clean with now i have many uses for vinegar i make all types of different vinegars and i have tons of videos on vinegar making out there and each vinegar a lot of them get used the same way well some of them do have their specific uses such as this one being specifically for cleaning i'm not going to use this in food stuff because these aren't organic orange peels or uh the ones that i make from the herbs from my garden from floral vinegars those vinegars are the ones i use to wash my hair with along with my homemade shampoo when i'm making the citrus vinegars like this as we're eating the fruits or using them in any way like i just juiced a whole bunch of oranges to make the, my asian orange chicken and which i i did just publish a video on so you'll i'll link to that down below but you should be able to look over the most recent videos and see that in there and so a lot of those peels are what's in here from the juicing and then but then as we're eating, you know, we peel an orange, we just put the peel down in the jar. Now, both of these are full, so uh, any more oranges we do, I'll have to start another fresh jar of vinegar. That's just one thing. So just talking about citrus peels, I'm going to talk more about other fruit scraps. But along with that, if I do have organic oranges, I'm blessed enough to find some, then those peels, I those are like gold to me. Uh, those I will save and I'll dehydrate them up. Uh, usually this time of the year, I'm doing this a lot on or near the wood stove. And then I powder them up into you know well into a powder that gets used in all kinds of things for making a, a homemade orange chocolate, orange almond cinnamon rolls, or orange pumpkin bread or whatever they get used in so many different things and then the most recent thing was again the same recipe i just mentioned the asian orange chicken the orange peels go in that as well and then i also use or uh citrus peels when i'm making soap so i have a couple different soaps i make using the orange peel along with my own homegrown herbs and same goes for the grapefruit i have a couple of different grapefruit uh, soaps that i make so i use the powdered up dried grapefruit peels in that uh, i don't use these to cook with so because orange peel i'm not going to make tea out of this or grapefruit peel is going to be very bitter so you can try it yourself but it it will make your tea or whatever extremely bitter i don't recommend it same thing with lime peels so lime and grapefruit they those peels only get used in things like soap making and <laughs> stuff like that but lemon peel is the other one i do insist on it being organic when it comes to drying it up because lemon peel gets used quite a bit in food as well as in the soaps but uh, yeah so this can also i use as flavorings for different things so there you go on citrus peels don't throw those citrus peels out even if they're not organic you can find other uses for them you can also use the lime lemon and grapefruit peels in making your citrus vinegar as well mix them all together that just makes a really great cleaning vinegar but then some other ideas for like right here i have an overripe pear that's just it's just too far gone it's not really rotten it's just very ripe and it's to that point where it's just like to me it's kind of gross to eat it i just don't like it it's too mushy and nasty so because simply because i forgot about it so this is something i would i would use in also making some vinegar so in fact this batch here of orange vinegar i had added because i had two of these pears left i had added one of the pears to that uh, I don't really have room in this one, but what I'm going to do is that this next batch that I'm going to start of orange vinegar, I'll put this pear in there. I'm going to chop it up and add it in there. But 
there's also the option if you have chickens chickens love this kind of stuff you can throw this out to your chickens and it just gives them an added treat and then of course anything any of your kitchen scraps like that can be composted to help feed your soils you know the difference with the coffee and the eggshells is those you want to put on top if you want to use them to help with pest control but the other things you can mix that in everything we do though we just toss on top we do this with banana peels or anything banana peels are great for your soil they break down really quickly unlike citrus peels don't break down very quick they're not bad for your soil necessarily but they and we've done that but they can take a very very long time to break down whereas banana peels you can just toss them out there and they'll break right down we don't have a compost pile or all of the garden stuff the pots everything becomes our compost pile if you want to call it that way and we just let it do like it would do in nature uh, fruits vegetables leaves twigs all this stuff in nature just falls to the ground it covers the ground gives it a good covering and then breaks down to feed the soil that's that's how it's done in nature so that's how we do it here any kind of kitchen scraps um, particularly fruit scraps or herbs can be used in making your various vinegars all right so now let's talk a little bit about the syrups in your home canned fruits so uh, I've got to over where over the years I've cut way back on the amount of sugar I actually use in my syrup but if you're like like in some of my older batches you know from a few years ago they're a lot more sugary and more syrupy these are something you can take and just cook it down some more and turn it into a syrup for pancakes or flavoring or to put over ice cream or something like that I personally haven't tried it I always think it sounds like a great idea but then I never do it but one thing that I have done is I have taken uh, the the liquid out of the fruit so when i go to drain it to use it for something else let's say i want to make a peach pie take the liquid drain it out and put it in a you know drain it into a jar like this size right here and then i uh, ferment it so what i've got here is some fermentation starter which by the way you can also make a fermentation starter out of out of your scraps you know i could take this organic pear and cut it up and start a pear fermentation starter that's another great idea and way to use up your fruit scraps but anyway then you can take the liquid right add a little bit of your fermentation starter and i have a very thorough video i did just on the fermentation starter i have one that's more condensed about 10 minutes long on how to make one but then i have a very thorough one that covers pretty much everything I could think of that's close to that's uh, about 24 minutes long and I'll go ahead and link to that one down below if you'd like to see that so you can learn all about this and and the, all the many ways to, to not just make it but to refresh it and to use it so anyway to a jar this size if I'm gonna have a like say I've got the peach syrup from if it fills up a jar about this size then I'm gonna put in about two tablespoons or an eighth cup of fermentation starter into that juice or that syrup and then let it ferment for a few days and what that will do is it will make it healthier by doing two things by adding more probiotics into the drink itself so that will be good for your gut health but it will also consume a lot of that excess sugar that's in there and thus bringing that sugar level way down and making it healthier in that way too so I've done that and it's with some plum uh, the syrup off some plums I I uh, canned years ago and it was it was really good it was still very thick but it did bring the sweetness way down and, and it boy it tasted wonderful so making just kind of a thicker sort of soda <laughs> out of it is is a is a great option and I'm sure there's many other uses if you got to thinking about it you strain off this liquid Think of all the many things that you can do with that for flavoring or adding to anything or even just adding to smoothies. Uh, usually if I'm going to make popsicles or you know, creamsicles or something like that, I just pour the whole jar in, juice and everything. I uh, used to not, but now I do. And just let all that go in there and then add a little bit of, of whipping cream, heavy whipping cream to make a nice rich creamsicle. So you can just take that and run with it. There's no sense in just dumping it down the sink and letting it go to waste. And then, of course, there's always the the bone broth. So what I have here is I have I just pulled it out of the freezer. I did talk about this in a recent video 
about how I usually when I'm making a broth, a bone broth out of turkey carcass or chicken carcass, and a lot of times with the chicken, I'll just make soup with it right away. But with turkey, I always, because it's a lot bigger, I usually have way more. And so what I like to do is I like to freeze it up. Though you can can it easily enough, I just prefer to go ahead and freeze mine. And you can see how I wrap it in just a little bit of flannel and a tie around it. To me, this is easy. You can come up. I know a lot of people talk about socks. That's a good option too, though all my socks are would be a little too small maybe some of patrick's old socks but we we wear our socks out pretty good so uh and then a lot of times i cut the tops off and i'll even use them to make a quilt a, a wool quilt i've done that before but anyway this method is cheap it's easy it's just some scrap flannel that i picked up out of garage sale and i've been wrapping all my jars in this just that's just to keep them protected from getting smacked against each other but anyway the point of me showing this is when it comes to your bones you can do this with any kind of bones whether it be uh, beef or venison or whatever cook it up you know just make your broth out of it and then preserve it whether it be canning it or freezing it or even just using it right away to make a soup or a gravy now uh, I don't have any videos showing how I make my broth I just it's just that once I get all the chicken or meat and stuff off of the carcass I leave it in the pan fill it up with water and put it on the stove and let it cook for at least a good day maybe two days at the back of the wood stove and then I strain the stuff out I usually throw a bunch of the meat back in there because usually what I'm going to use it for is going to be making a soup of some kind anyway and so uh yeah and it's a uh, way to you can get the most out of that chicken that turkey or whatever instead of just throwing those bones out burning them up or whatever get all the good minerals out of them first by making a broth and then throw them out and if you're interested in learning how to make your own bone broth you know aside from the very simple way i described how i did it uh mary over at mary's nest have has quite a few videos on making bone broth and i will go ahead and link to her channel down below and you can do a search Okay, and now what I would like to do, because I know these few things that I talked about were just the, just a few. I know I'm going to think remember a whole bunch of stuff later. I'm like, oh, I forgot to mention this and this and this and this. So what I would like you to do, instead of me worrying about trying to remember everything, I would like you guys to put down below, how do you use your various kitchen scraps, like your pickle juice, or even the liquid off the jalapeno and garlic stuffed olives i've got some liquid left here how do you use that up what are what are the various things you like to do with that i've got some ideas for this that i'm probably going to do i'm still thinking about it but anyway go ahead and share your all your different ideas with it and even if it's something that i've showed you here that i already do go ahead and share that too say yeah i do that too i like to use my citrus peels for this that or maybe you dehydrate up your citrus peels but maybe you use them in a different way or in different things than i do so uh go ahead and share all that information because we want to make the most of what we got when we're throwing some perfectly good stuff that's got lots of vitamins and minerals you know you don't want to just throw that stuff in the garbage i mean good grief at the very least you should be composting it if you have any kind of plants growing and that that's going to be a great option so okay well i hope you enjoyed this video and also don't forget to read people's comments down below if you have the time and if you don't i do plan on possibly doing follow-up videos to this series where people throw in their ideas so i can share those with you as well in case you don't have time to read all the comments all right thanks for watching take care and god bless Thank you.